Have you ever checked the deed to your home? Probably not. I don't even know how I would do that. <laughs> um, but after today's eight on your side story, you're probably going to want to find it and look for it. The IT News' Michelle Mortensen joins us now with the story of how one woman learned that uh, the home she had lived in for more than 20 years didn't even belong to her. Yeah, Sandra Berrigan actually wrote me when her nightmare first began. She found a man named Eric Alpert had taken over the ownership of her home through a trust. Now, the name Eric Alpert was one that we all knew well here at the I-Team. After all, the I-Team has been looking into him since 2009. He faces dozens of felony counts. He allegedly took over abandoned homes and rented them out. But unbeknownst to Sandra, he also took over her home, which was never abandoned at all. Okay, I haven't slept or eaten since this has started. <laughs> A few weeks ago, Sandra Berrigan's life turned upside down. I'm living in an empty house, or I should say I'm not living. Sandra put her home on the market. She planned to move to North Carolina to be with her daughter and grandchild. But just one day before closing, she says, My whole life was robbed. Her realtor needed some paperwork, her trust documents. But Sandra didn't have a trust, or so she thought. I just never questioned it. She quickly uncovered someone had taken her home right from under her, and she never knew it. It all goes back to 2003. I had taken out a loan about 10 years ago. The loan came from this man, Eric Alpert, a former real estate agent and lender whose license was revoked in 2004. And for some reason, her home now belonged to him. He basically took all of my information and put it into a trust. Which meant Sandra didn't have the right to sell her home anymore. She was stuck. I, I didn't know what to do, where to turn. Her only option? Berrigan versus JDA. Coming here. Helped her get a mortgage, took out the loan, the loan was paid off. On April 17th, Sandra got a quiet title to her home. But neither Albert or his lawyer bothered to show up to the court case. Why? Albert told me on the phone he didn't even know about it until after the fact. And that he only took over her property through trust because she defaulted on the loan. When I asked for proof, he had this to say. I have no documentation at all because all of my records were abscounded by the police department. Why do police have his records? In 2009, the I-Team revealed Alpert allegedly did the same thing to many other families. He's been charged with 24 felony counts for taking over people's homes. So why is he still on the streets? Because his case keeps getting delayed. Every time he changes a lawyer, and he's changed lawyers, that's a delay in the system because now the system this is Sandra's lawyer chance get a lawyer bring that lawyer up to speed Becky and Pintar someone like Eric Alpert that's a con man knows how to work the system they know how to drag things out and they keep doing it it's a white collar crime but in my opinion you can do a lot more damage with a ballpoint than you can with a gun Sandra spent thousands of dollars in legal fees to get the title back to her home and unfortunately, the buyers dropped out. This is economical homicide, what the Alperts have done to me. This was the den that my children used. When now she's trying to pick up the pieces and once again. She's relisted her home and hopes she can get back what she lost. Now, you may be wondering what you can do to make sure something like this hasn't happened to you. And thankfully, you can find out very easily. A quick property search on the Clark County Recorder's website can tell you everything. So if you see a discrepancy, you need to look into it right away, and you may possibly need to take legal action. Okay, first thing we've got to do is find the deed to our house. Yes. Second thing, <laughs> um, what about Albert? Is he ever going to go to court? I mean, she said right there he's going to, he keeps getting different attorneys and it keeps delaying things. Yeah, now in Sanders' case, it will depend on the DA whether this case goes to court. But the other cases from the past, that is a difficult question because of our legal system, due process and things of that nature. Right. But Nathan Bach is actually going to dig a lot deeper into that at 5 o'clock. Yeah, we want to tell the viewers tonight at 6.30, you and Nathan are going to answer questions about the story. You can join them in a Google Plus hangout uh, about the Alpert case, protecting your home. If you want to take part, go to our website at 630. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks.